Well, well, from here, let's take a look. As you can see, we start at n, and then this part is just n minus 2, n minus 4, and so on, right? So, here, let me just make a note right here. We can write n double factorial as n times this part, which is just n minus 2 double factorial, right? So it's pretty similar to the regular factorial, but this is what we have for the double factorial situation. And now from here, let's see, I want to end up with 0 factorial. I'm not going to plug in 0 into all the ends because that way I will have to talk about what's negative 2 factorial, 0 factorial, right? <laughs> so in fact, I'm going to go from here and say that n equals to 2. Why? Because this way we will have 2 double factorial and this is equal to 2 times 2 minus 2 and then double factorial and you see this is just 2 double factorial and this is just 2 times 2 minus 2 is of course 0 and now we have the double factorial right here and of course you can see that the 0 double factorial is just going to be 2 double factorial over regular 2 and 2 double factorial is just 2 over this 2 which is 1 right so as you can see 0 factorial factorial man I keep saying it wrong let me do it again. As we can see, 0 double factorial should be equal to 1, isn't it? And in fact, I can also tell you if you plug in n is equal to 1, you can work this out. You will work out negative 1 double factorial. And this will also suggest you that that should be equal to 1 as well. But anyway, let me just put this down. If n is equal to 0, right, when you want to have 0 double factorial, from here, we see that this should be equal to 1. Okay, so that's pretty much it. And you might be wondering, okay, this, is this the end of the video? Well, of course not, because otherwise this will be too boring, huh? Alright, this is the good definition for the double factorial. But anyway, a lot of you guys have been asking me, can we actually extend the double factorial by using the gamma function or maybe the pi function. And yes, we can, of course. So that's why I want to do it with you guys right now. So this is what I need to talk about. Let's talk about the fractional regular factorial first, okay? So as a reminder, let's take a look of one half factorial. This right here, as we all know, is equal to square root of pi over two. If you don't know about this, you can watch my video. Uh, the link will be in the description. But anyway, and let's take a look of 3 half regular factorial. Okay, so what's 3 half regular factorial? Do I have to bring up the gamma function or the pi function to help us out? No, not really. Because I can use the property of regular factorial. And regular factorial is equal to n times n minus 1 regular factorial. The idea here is that I will just have 3 half, which is the n value, right? technically, if you want to extend the concept of regular factorial. And then you multiply by 3 half minus 1, which is 1 half, and then factorial. So you pretty much multiply by this guy, which is square root of pi over 2, like that. And likewise, I can also have 5 half factorial, and you know, this is just going to be the inside, which is 5 half, and then multiply by the previous version, which is this part. So let me put this down. 3 over 2, and then square root of pi over 2. So you can see, this is what we have right here. And you guys should see the pattern right now already, isn't it? Um, if you guys would like, let's do one more. And you see that 7, 5, 3. Of course, you can have the 1 here if you would like. Multiply by 1. Don't let the 1 uh, feel left out. Yeah. And now, on the top, this is the odd double factorial, isn't it? Hmm. Okay, and now let's make a connection with the gamma function. How can we do that? Well, I'm going to bring up more properties. And I have done all these properties in the past already, so um, if you guys want to check that out, be sure you guys watch my videos. The links will be all in there, alright? So, let's bring up the gamma function. And you might be wondering, why not the pi function? <sighs> Unfortunately, gamma function is more famous, so yeah. Anyway. So here is the traditional 
uh, presentation for gamma. Gamma n, this right here is equal to n minus 1 factorial. Okay. But uh, I want to look at this in a different way. So let me plug in n plus 1 into n on both sides. In another word, we know that gamma of n plus 1, this right here, it's actually equal to n factorial. That's very nice. Okay. So what are we doing? Let's take a look right here. When you have one half right here, you are plugging one half right here for the n. So you are talking about gamma. And allow me to actually put down the one first. Gamma of one plus one half. And of course, I am going to make the one stand out. You'll see why. And now that's purple. Not really, but whatever. Anyway, let's do the next one. Three half factorial, this is the same as gamma. And remember, n factorial is the same as gamma of n plus 1. So inside here, I should put down 3 half plus 1, which is the same as 5 half, right? And remember, 5 half is of course the same as 2 and 1 half. So let me write it down as 2 plus 1 half, like this, okay? And let's do a few more, you guys will see the pattern. The next one is 5 half factorial, so of course that will be the n value. You go here, which is 5 half plus 1 instead of the gamma function. 5 half plus 1 is 7 half, but that's the same as 3 plus 1 half, isn't it? So let's just write that down. And of course, you know the next one is going to be the gamma of 4 plus 1 half. And that will give you 7 over 2 factorial, like that. Okay? So this is what we have. And why do we need this? Well, let's see the pattern. Da, 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 this right here will be the gamma, and we have 1, 2, 3, 4. Of course, to come with a formula, let's use a variable, and let me just use n, okay? n plus 1 half. And I'm going to skip the factorial because this is not our main dish of the day. We are talking about the double factorial. So now let's make an observation. Right here, we have 4. And you know this is going to be 7 double factorial, right? So how can we go from 4 to 7? Well, 2 times 4 is 8 and then minus 1, right? So on this side, we will just have 2 times n and then minus 1, and then you do the double factorial for that. Let's check for this one. When n is equal to 3, well, 2 times 3 is 6, minus 1 is 5, and if you do the double factorial, it's going to be 5 times 3 times 1, of course, right? So this right here takes care of these numbers. And don't forget, we have the 2's on the denominator. And how many 2's do we have? When n is equal to 4, we have 4 of them. Now we have n of them, right? So we are just going to have 2 to the n's power. So this is the part. And don't forget, we have one more guy right here, the square root of pi. I know I missed the pi day, but you know, forgive me. I was busy running the marathon, training for the marathon, actually. OK, so this right here is a really nice connection between the gamma function and the double factorial. OK, so let me box this right here. And if you would like, of course, we can also just isolate the double factorial portion. So if you um, divide this on both sides and multiply that on both sides, you will end up pretty cool isn't it? Aha! And now, by looking at this definition, this, this, is, this how is, is how you can see that the concept of double factorial, factorial because we are using the gamma function, which is really cool. <sighs> Let's see, what if n happens to be 1 half? I know it deal with a lot of 1 half, but let's take a look. This is legitimate, right? If you're willing to take this for your definition, then of course this is good. So I'm just going to plug in 1 half into the end, and I will show you guys all the work. So we have 2 times 1 half, and then minus 1, and this is the double factorial. And of course, this will be equal to 2 to the 1 half power now. And then we have this over square root of pi. And then we have the gamma of n is 1 half, and then plus 1 half. Okay? Now, on the left-hand side, this is the zero double factorial. On the right-hand side, okay, this is square root of 2 on the top. 
over square root of pi. So if you would like, you can just open the square root for it, 2 over pi, like this. And of course, this right here, you have to work this out. This is just gamma of 1. And let me just write down one more thing right here for you guys. If you have gamma of 1, you can just plug in 0 into here, and you get 0 regular factorial, which is equal to 1, okay? So gamma of 1 is just equal to 1. So this right here is just equal to 1. And take a look, what do we end up with? We are saying that 0 double factorial is equal to square root of 2 over pi. So here is the conclusion based on this. All right, so let me just write this down. In the end, we see that when we have zero double factorial, if you want to use the gamma function to extend the concept of this, you actually end up nicely square root of 2 over pi. And this is so cool that it deserves a red box, actually, because I boxed a lot of things in this video already. Oh my god. All right, so now the debate is that, so, Zero double factorial to be one, or sure, zero double factorial to be square root of two over pi. You can leave a comment down below and let me know which one do you like more. Anyway, hopefully you guys like this video, and if you guys are new to my channel, please subscribe to my channel. I like to make math videos for you guys, and yeah, as always, that's it.